Да, да нажимай просто. Эй, это Слав из Crisis Hill with the Crypt, и вы слушаете Metal O Mania, motherfucker. Yeah. This is Dawn of the Dead from Nunslaughter, and you're watching Metalomania. Hey, man. Is that Metalomania? Yeah, man. Well, turn it up. This is the crew from Metalomania. I got my headphones on and my dick in your cat. Let's party. It's time to metal. <laughs> I'll get the lubricant. There's no time for lubricant. There's always time for lubricant! Off. We kick off episode number 243 of Metal Mania. Holy shit, that's crazy to say out loud. But what's up, man? We are joined by my brother, Henry. How are you, brother? Good. How are you doing, man? Oh, dude, I appreciate you joining me for the show tonight, man. No problem. It's always an honor coming on. It's always fun as shit, so... Means a lot, means a lot. But, uh, well, you know, many people probably know that you've been on the show several times at this point now. But for the people who don't know you, introduce yourself to kick off our, our program tonight, sir. Uh, my name is Henry Jordan. Uh, I play guitar and do the vocals in the thrash metal band Pursuit from Fargo, North Dakota. Fuck well, yeah. And have some history with us here at Metal Mania. You first appeared on the show shit over a year ago, actually, with our buddy Ron, our reporter on location for Devastation, did his, our, his, our first communication with you. And uh, since then, we've had Pursuit on twice. And then you and Brandon came and joined me for the video game special, man. That was a lot of fun, right? Anytime I go on vacation in the South, as soon as somebody hears that I'm from Minnesota, they're like, oh, Fargo. And I'm like, cool, don't talk to me anymore. Yeah, like, it's got, yeah no, right. no, no, no. I don't want to hear it, dude. I'm from Scran, and all we get is <laughs> office jokes. So I don't even want to hear it. <laughs> that is a, a strange coincidence, man. You're both from places that have been pigeonholed by television shows. How funny is that shit? <laughs> 
Fuck yeah, dude. And Brandon and I still keep in touch a lot, too, which is sick. So Awesome. He's a good dude, man. Cruel Bomb just put out a new uh, release, man. So all of you metalheads out there, go and support Badassery and get you some Cruel Bomb in your life. I believe it's man-made, I believe. Fuck yeah, fuck yeah. And we'll talk some Pursuit, of course, as we go along, but I don't want to overlook the fact that that was Rake Off. That band was Rake Off that we opened up the show with tonight. That's an Italian thrash band with some real good crossover roots. I really dig that release. The album's called Observing Madness. That song was Killing Machine, and it is a debut full-length release that just came out on January 10th. So if you're out there playing the drinking game, we just said the word debut, get your drink on, or your bong mid on, whatever you do. So, uh, but yeah, we got my brother, Henry, from Pursuit, hanging out with us tonight, all the way from Fargo, as a matter of fact, man. So I got to ask first question, how cold is it there right now? Um, currently, it is nine degrees out, which is a pretty modest temperature. It's crazy, um, right? Yeah. Normally, this time of the year, it's below zero. So I'll, wow. take, I'll take nine above. Nine, yeah, nine is summertime, right? Fuck, that's good. You're going to go in your shorts, right? <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, nine is make your dick hurt cold, in my opinion, sir. Man, there is uh, about a few weeks ago, it was so cold that the windshield of my car cracked. I had oh. to be replaced. So. Oh, shit. I've been seeing a lot of pictures lately on people on social media who left like sodas in their car overnight and they explode in their car and shit. Yeah, dude, it's fucking, it's crazy. Man, once it gets. I swear to once it gets past 10 below, it all feels the same. It just gets progressively more dangerous, but it's like after a while, you just, it just kind of feels the same. Right. How, right. Your sensors can only develop, you know, differentiate. There's the word I'm looking for. Differentiate between so much fucking, you know, cold. Well, you know, speaking on that, man, I, I have some crazy notes from some news of the recent, and this one certainly falls into the weather thing. So I'm going to bring it up now, but on January 21st, so just a couple of weeks ago, the Siberian marathon in Russia and Siberia mm-hmm. broke a record for the coldest marathon run in history. Dude, it was fucking 63.4, negative 63.4 degrees. Fuck that. What the fuck? How do you run a fucking marathon of that, dude? I can barely get out of bed even when it's warm outside. That is fucking... Balls to the wall insane, brother. That is, like, mind-blowing insane to me. Well, and here's the worst part. Here's the kicker. They changed the start time of the race to avoid it being negative 76 degrees at one point. At that point, somebody's just, the person's just going to shoot the pistol and be like, all right, you guys are about to start in 3, 2, 1, and you're going to run to survive and keep warm. So. <laughs> Shit, at them temperatures, I'm going to run over to the guy with the pistol and tell him to shoot me. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> It's fucking ridiculous. Oh, oh, man. That is balls stuck to your leg, look cold. <laughs> Dude, they're fucking, at that point, your balls are just sucked into your stomach. <laughs> they're not hanging. That shit's, you're, like a, you're like a scared tortoise just fucking. Like, hey. <laughs> that's your dick. You're, you know, that'll make your dick in any. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah. There was, um, I think it was a Minnesota Wild game that was played if, like a few weeks ago. I, I don't keep up a whole lot on sports, but there was an outdoor hockey game of, like in January, and fucking like I saw so many pictures of people like sitting in an outdoor venue and it was like below zero and they're trying to drink ice cold Bud Lights that are freezing when they're fucking drinking them and shit. Oh, that's crazy, dude. That's that's crazy cold, man. When yeah, the videos of people like throwing boiling water to the air and it immediately turns to like fucking you know ice dust and shit. That's fucking cold, son. I don't want no part of that. And I like winter, man. Are, are you a? Fa- I know you live in a cold region generally, but do you like? Are you a fan of winter time? Are you a cold weather guy? Would you say? Yeah, I'm. I'm definitely more of a cold weather guy. Like me too. Um, I'll take it over the heat. Yeah, it's like it's definitely very inconvenient. Um, when it's super cold out, but yeah, I, I can handle like 30 below a lot better than I can handle like 90 degrees outside. So me too, brother. People have asked me a million times about like me and Scully's dynamic, man. And we get along, we see eye to eye on those things. We, you know, the one point of contention in which we have the most disagreement is what temperature do you want to live your life at? She is always freezing and I'm always hot. So there you go, man. 
Yeah. You know how when you meet a woman, you always talk about the big things. How many kids do you want? What do you want to do for a living? Where do you want to live? Kind of thing. Nobody discusses with their significant other. What fucking temperature do you want to live our lives at? And it's important. It's a, it's a big one. Yeah. That's why I fucking, I keep a bunch of extra blankets in my bed for Whitney too. Just fucking every night. I'll just be like, I'll be like sprawled out shirtless just like completely passed out and she'll be fucking bundled up under all these different blankets. Ah, uh, yes, sir. I get it. That's exactly us, man. I'm in the shape of a pretzel butt naked and she's got 14 blankets, you know. <laughs> Are you ready for spring though? I know we're talking a little bit about cold, but I think the mantra seems to be becoming that this spring, hopefully we're all going to return to the land of the living a little bit, man. Doesn't that sound great to you? Yeah, it does, man. And it sounds great um, just because I don't have to deal with fucking shoveling and all the snow we've been getting up here lately. But for performance reasons, too, like fucking, you know, I like playing. I like performing and shit. But in the winter, especially in the Midwest, when you've got gigs and shit out of town, it's a safety risk. Like, yeah, you know, almost went off the road in our van. Oh, shit. Back from the last gig we had and we weren't even... We weren't doing anything besides literally just driving. You know what I'm saying? So that's the other thing. With the springtime comes more gigs. Life, man. Life, you know. it's it's. There's more to it than just the birds and the bees out there coming to life, man. Fucking human beings spring back to life in springtime as well. <laughs> you know, and I can't wait, dude. I lost all this weight and then the fucking COVID came, dude. I, you know, I lost all this weight to go and do things in the world. And then the world said, fuck you, get in your house and stay there. <laughs> You fuck, you know, what the hell was that about? <laughs> this COVID has definitely put a lot of things in perspective for a lot of people. And yeah, man. For no question. Me, it, like, you know, I'm definitely appreciating my friends and family and my local community a lot more. Really able to, uh, to see and understand who matters in your life and why they matter and fucking. So there is. A blessing in disguise. I agree to an extent. I saw a comedian say recently, like, times like these, you find out who your real friends are, and nobody wanted to fucking know that at all, you know? And <laughs> who asked for that? I'm realizing right now, I failed to mention for all of you metalomaniacs out there hanging out with me and Henry tonight for episode 243, that do, we do have a couple of special guests coming by later in the show as well, man. We have Insanity Alert returning to the show, man. Our buddy Heavy Kevy with some badass cr crossover band at Insanity Alert, who I love. And uh, later, we're going to be talking to Pizza Death another band who i've grown very 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 fond of here as of late so we have kick-ass guests hanging out with us here tonight all night on metalomania and back to my brother henry in which for people who hang out with the show man uh today was filming day for our for our show we had me i had scully lined up to come in here and do some filming with me and shit and then she hit me up and said i'm tied up at work and they're doing her other gig the real gig and uh i might leave you stranded so dude i gotta tell you man i reached out to my brother henry and said can you come do the show with me and i appreciate the fuck that uh, how are you doing it man yeah no problem dude it's always a fucking awesome time coming on dude so. good stuff good stuff well and let's do a quick plug if we may man for those who are uh, new to pursuit man where can they follow you where they can they check you out and hang out with you um right now you can do facebook and Bandcamp and instagram are our main ones um and we're intentionally withholding some of our material until our album comes out so i apologize for that but hey i get it come summertime we're gonna have a fucking badass full length up so sounds like another excuse to bring you back on to me brother so that's all good Fuck yeah, yeah dude. fuck yeah, dude. That's good shit. Yeah, follow this cat on all the social media shit, man. For real, this is one of my favorite people, man. And go into our archives, if you will. We did again the video game special where you, me, and Brandon counted down the greatest video games of all time. I had a blast for that. And uh, not to be overlooked, you know, our everybody f was kung fu fighting video, man. I get such mileage out of that, man. Everybody was kung fu fighting. Yeah. Those rabbits were fast as lightning, yeah. And that was a little bit frightening. But they fought the legs for timing. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, I appreciate you doing that. <laughs> Man, that was a time, dude. Yeah, that's fun shit. That's fun. Let it never be said that metalheads can't have fun, goddammit. We, we have fun. 
So I, you know, I've been going through some of these goofy videos that people send us goofy videos all the time, man, but and goofy news stories and shit. I believe the story that someone sent us in England. I'd like to get your take on it. They learned from how Scully motivates me around here and to save this dog. Apparently, someone noticed that there was a dog wandering around dangerous mud flats, and if he falls into these different flats, he could disappear until it be gone. So they left to action, and somebody hung sausages from a drone and oh, yeah. led the dog right out of there with i'm probably revealing a little too much but that's actually how much scully motivates me around the studio is she has a drone that she hangs food off of and it you know <laughs> dude that's actually fucking genius though well, right what, I, what a good I, idea I'm just like casually sniffing around for a place to piss and just kind of looks up like oh huh. yeah. <laughs> i'm just fucking <laughs> magic it's hanging food <laughs> God has spoken. <laughs> Have you ever seen an old ass movie called The Gods Must Be Crazy? It's like 1976, I want to say, but no, I'll I've never seen it. Do check it out, man. That's pretty funny. Pretty funny movie. <laughs> but uh, all you metalheads out there, check it out. So, what have you been binging, man? What you been binging on to get through the fucking pandemic lately? What you been binge watching and doing? I know you play a lot of guitar with your downtime, but what you been binging on? Um, been watching the last few days. I've been watching a lot of Bob's Burgers. Um, I love that show, actually. That show's the shit. Yeah, and a little bit, a little bit of King of the Hill. Um, trying to think what me and Whitney been watching. Um, I know she's been watching Family Guy a lot of times. She uh, oh. she refrained for years from watching it, but now she begrudgingly got into it. And now she's just like, oh my god, it's one of my favorite shows. I love it. Yeah, so a lot of animation. Well, yeah. tell her if she's a fan of Seth MacFarlane, check out the Million Ways to Die movie in the West if you haven't seen it. Man, a Million Ways to Die in the West is the guy that made Family Guy. And nobody ever everybody I talked to nobody's ever seen it and it's fucking hilarious man it's a okay. hilarious movie Sarah Silverman's in it fucking yeah. the guy Seth MacFarlane himself is in it it's a great movie but yeah I just got through and I'm recommending to all you metalheads out there to check out the uh, Yellow Jackets show not Yellowstone Yellow Jackets I believe it's on Showtime that's pretty good pretty, we just benched that out it was pretty funny I mean not funny pretty dark excuse me <laughs> look everybody thinks I'm a fucked up cat because I just called that show funny and it's not at all funny it's very fucked up actually but it's it's good you'll <laughs> like it uh, but you know we're gonna get, we're gonna play a little music for everybody and then we're gonna come back and talk about a little bit about records tonight man I, I I have an idea for a future episode and I'm gonna get your take on some of my ideas and, and we'll bounce it around a little bit around the, around the room here so uh, yeah. let's say we play three songs for everybody real quick and we'll come back and kick those ideas around fuck yeah I got a three pack of badassery for all of you metalheads out there and we're gonna open it up with some dissident dissident the song shred from the release shred these killers from France have just released this monster onto the world and it is playlist shit ladies and gentlemen so thrashed on right sophomore outing from these cats and we're gonna follow behind that with generation kill into the black from MK ultra this of course is Rob Dukes's other band besides his stint when he was with Exodus I see that the generation kill seems to have the moniker of crossover hung on it which is something we're gonna talk about quite a bit tonight on the show is crossover metal i feel like some of it has a lot of a new metal approach to it perhaps you guys be your own judge but i love the song into the black from mk ultra we're gonna play it for you tonight and then we're gonna play the band shatter death of the universe is both the song and the name of the new release from this badass band from russia man this is their sixth full-length outing we've been telling you forever russia has a killer scene and this is more proof of it so check out these three jams and don't go nowhere because we got more metal we got guests galore and we got my brother henry hanging out with us here at metalomania tonight Tonight. Thanks for doing this, sir. I appreciate it. No problem, man. Let's jam. But you may call me the Shredder.
Stuff. You want to do it again and put on some interracial porn? I will burn it and snort the ashes like it's 1982. Don't you worry. <laughs>
in my good name, you fucking jizz jacuzzi. I'm through with you. Look, Agent Smith, I tried the hero business and it left a mark. But if I ever hit fuck it, I'll look you up. Over me. Relax. Wolf, it's just a little cum. It's a lot of cum. Wolf! 
And that's a three pack of badass metal to keep you to keep you chuggy, man, to keep you moving and motivated in this crazy, goofy fucking world we live in. And uh, I enjoy all three of those bands. As what do you think? Every good shit, right? Fuck yeah, dude. Good shit, good shit. Yeah. Support those bands and support my brother Henry and the band Pursuit. And we got more guests coming by to check out some things with you today. But uh, we're we're always reaching out to our listeners and asking them for goofy stories that they want us to talk about on the show or different things. We're going to get into some some Guinness Book of World Record things here in a second, man, because some people have some pretty interesting shit that they've sent us on that topic. We talked about it a few months ago, and it seems to have set off a little bit of a uh, you know some responses from a bunch of our our people out there. But some of the stories people sent us, we've solicited our listeners out there, and I appreciate you all to send us stories that are goofy type stuff man and we now get our our, our boxes shoved full of them oh giggity, 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 goo. They, <laughs> four british dudes played the board game for dune recently for 85 hours setting a new record 85 hours for a board game a board game could you play a board game for 85 straight hours i can barely play one for two 85 hours straight is that the deal is that the deal that's that's heavy they, they must have had to take some kind of fucking sleeping breaks. I wonder if it was like total, maybe or right. How long can how long can you stay awake? How many hours can you stay? <laughs> fucking, I can barely stay. Awake. And and what constitutes the the game still being active? You're if you're falling asleep at the board, are you still playing? <laughs> That's crazy, man. Some Idaho dude broke fifty two Guinness Book of World Records over the course of 52 weeks over 52 weeks you know I, you probably don't remember there was an old show called soap the way uh, billy crystal got a start on it that's all it was he um really old school show that kind of made fun of soap operas it was really goofy and funny but the guy there was a season on there where the guy thought he was going to die so his legacy he decided he wanted to break a bunch of guinness book of world records things that way his name would live on the guinness book of world records it used to be a big thing when I was young. For your generation, was it? Yeah, there was like Guinness Book of World Records, and then oh man, I think I thought there was one more, but I can't think of the name on it. But I definitely like I remember, especially in elementary school, like there'd be the little collection of books in each classroom, and there was always Ripley's like, Believe It or Not. I'll bet it was Ripley's yeah, Believe It or Not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there you go. Yep. So yeah, it's Guinness and Ripley's that were the fucking big ones when I was in school. Yeah, well, you know, strangely enough, speaking of records, the Book of World Records put out by Guinness is the most stolen book from libraries. It has that record. It has the distinction of being its own record. So there you go. Nice. <laughs> the most stolen book from libraries is apparently the Guinness Book of World Records. But but that's a pretty good legacy, man. Well, you know, it led to me having the idea of, I would like to do a future episode of our show where we try to break some records, man. We get we get a few people to come in and we, we identify a few breakable records. And right here live on Metalomania, man, we try to fucking get into the Guinness Book of World Records somehow. What do you think of that shit? Dude, I'm super down for that. We should find like the most ridiculous ones, like just the most asinine record you can possibly. <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, well, you know, uh, our crack staff here has identified a few. So let's talk about a couple of them, actually, over the next couple of breaks. We've identified a few breakable records. And I'd like to get your take on these, Henry. <laughs> Um, and this one's a good one, especially for you metalheads out there, man. I'd like to throw this one over to the Thralls of Metal Guys. Shout out to the Thralls of Metal Guys, to Chronic Nick and everybody. But this one is CD related. So the most CDs balanced on one finger is a record in the Guinness Book of World Records. If you had to guess how many CDs now, I'll tell you, and your finger can't go into any kind of holes at all. It has to be flat. What would you guess the record is for most CDs balanced on one finger, sir? I'd say at least 20. It is at least 20. It is it, it is 50, in fact. 50 CDs. But I think we can break that one. I think that's one we can break, man. I do. <laughs> I think there's we got somebody in our listening audience that's watching right now that's like, oh, fuck, I can fuck that record up, man. And I encourage you to reach out to us. So, you know, we're going we're gonna to put some of our listeners into the Guinness Book of World Records. By the time this is said and done, there's going to be a little asterisk somewhere in the Guinness Book of World Records about the Metalomania cats getting some of these fuckers into the... <laughs> into the book so yeah 50 cds that's it and for those who are I, I i realize it's the digital world so some people probably may not recognize the concept of what i mean that's a pretty that's a sizable stack of cds 50 cds that's a big stack 
Yeah. You know, pretty funny. All right, well, what about this one, man? The most T-shirts put on in one minute. Now, just for the background here, that means put the T-shirt on, pull it down, and then put on another T-shirt. So to do that entire process, and I realize I, I, I'm, I'm – treating you terribly unfairly by asking you to guess these things sir it's a horrific thing to do to you and i understand that but what, what would you what would you guess in one minute what, how many times do you think someone could take their shirt on and off now we played this game a little bit in-house and i'll tell you no matter what your guesses are they can't be worse than some of the ones we had from some of the people here in the studio <laughs> earlier so we had someone guess 250 so okay well, in a minute that's a little that's a little much I would say, my opinion, it sounds reasonable to take about a second to a second and a half to take on a shirt and put it off. So I'm going to say in a minute between 40 to 50 to 55. Well, first of all, I love you because I guessed 40. My guess was 40. Um, but it's 31. It's only 31, you know. Now, we haven't done experiments yet because I want to set up the camera and film it when we do. But I, I want to take a shot at some of these things in the near future, man. 31. Now, again, you, you'd have to take it completely on. And here's a kicker here, a, a disclaimer here. You may not have a friend help you, but you can have a friend help you with the pull down. Once you've got it past your, your arms, a friend can help you pull it down to the waist. You can have assistance. I feel like a big determining factor in how quickly you can do it is how the t-shirts are set up around you. Because, like, if you, yes. if you have to fucking pick it up and unfold it, you're done. You're, you're done. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I think you have to lay them in front of you and you have to kind of walk. I, my plan would be to walk down, kind of lay them all out in front of you on something and go right to left, put them on and off, you know? I'd fucking, I'd stand in the middle of a room like this, and I'd have somebody aim a shirt cannon at me. <laughs> <laughs> just scoot them on, and then just scoot. Fuck oh, yeah, dude. That's awesome. <laughs> hey, I promise you, when, when I try to break this record, and I'm going to try, yeah. pursuit, my, my pursuit shirt will be one of the ones I put on for that, sir. I promise. There you go. Hell yeah. Thank you. It could actually be an interesting segment, too. How many bands can Chris plug, or can the Crypt plug in fucking... In trying to break a record. Yeah, dude. I like yeah. that, dude. I, they'll all be band shirts, I promise you. What am I wearing? So, oh, I got my Fantastic Four shirt on. I got my nerd shirt on today, but that's all right. On a side note, dude, I got to, we'll talk more records in a second, but I got to get your feedback also. I just thought of it. My my badass little replica that my buddy sent me, uh, my little bobblehead of me with my Pursuit hat on, man. Pretty badass, right? I love that fucking thing. I have these shorts. <laughs> my Pursuit hat. He got my Pursuit hat on, right. you know? Fuck yeah, dude. That's so cool. When when you posted that shit, I was not expecting there to be a pursuit sticker on it. But I fucking I sent that to the other dudes in the band. I'm like, yo, dude, check out this bobblehead of the crypt. <laughs> it was awesome, dude. That was one of my favorite possessions, man. Dude, I I seriously your undying support of not only pursuit but like of the just all things metal is fucking awesome, dude. Like, seriously, thank you so much. I fucking love you, man. <laughs> Finish your thought. No, no, I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I love you for saying that, brother. For real, I appreciate that very much. And I'm a fan of you, my friend. So, again, summertime, I've already written down here while we were talking that you're coming back on summertime with, with new pursuit music. So, appreciate that, dude. Don't think I won't hold you to it. Oh, I will. I'll make, I'll make sure to to leave you on read and ghost you and fucking yeah right <laughs> yeah I want to be I want to be called a douche by the mighty crypt ah yeah man I I had to call someone I love a douche this week man and, and it hurt me I won't lie to you it hurt me it hurt my feelings it was somebody I care a great deal for in my in the, in the music world so you know uh, that's a story for another day I guess but I did end that with your fucking douche what a douche. And if you earn being a douche, be called a douche, then there should always be somebody to call you a douche out there. And I'm willing to be that guy for you. So <laughs> let me ask you this. If you were given one minute to eat jello with chopsticks, how much? <laughs> I, I could eat one jello. I could probably pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, dude. I, I do this one in particular. I even added to the list because I want video of our people trying it. I think this would be hilarious to film. You know, a bunch of people attacking fucking jello with fucking chopsticks. Sounds fucking great to me. <laughs> Well, uh, the world record for those wondering is 3.2 ounces. I don't even, you'll have to figure that out on your own, but uh, 3.2 ounces. Uh, you have to use one hand with your chopsticks and the other must be behind your back the entire time for it to count for the Guinness Book of World Records. So 
I so very desperately am reaching out to all of you metalomaniacs out there to please, please, please try this record and send us your footage. I want it. They have to like, <laughs> do they have to pick it up and eat it, or can they just like shovel it in their mouth? It has to be brought from bowl to mouth with with chopstick. I'm not sure what the distance is. I wonder how close you can get your face to it. That's a good question, actually. These, you know, can you lean right over the bowl? Right. Yeah. Let me do long strokes with it. You know, <laughs> John Holmes long strokes on my jello to my mouth. Anyhow. Uh... <laughs> That's good shit. I, I want footage of that, though. Please try that out there, people, and send, send us your footage. And here's another one I want footage of, man. So if I were to hand you a stack of little post-it notes, how many of them could you stick to your face in a minute? <laughs> <laughs> and now the rule is they have to be stuck to your face for the full minute plus 10 seconds after the last one has been placed for it to count so when once you stop sticking them to you know once the minute's over you have to stop and then they have to stay on your face for 10 full seconds for it to count as a record mm. my guess now this one i will say i had pretty close i i undersold it but what was your guess and then i'll tell you what my guess was i'd say at least a full stack okay so between what's your number uh, of sticky notes on your face oh man uh, how many? Yeah, I think there's like a hundred in a stack, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. I would say close to a hundred. Do they have to be in separate spots or can they just be on like... Oh, that's a good question, actually. I think they have to be on different spots, but they might be able to... Uh, they have to overlap. Yeah. But I doubt you can stick it all in one place on your forehead because if you do that, they're going to fall off. Yeah. You know? So it has to be strategic, I would imagine, man. It has to be coverage versus stickiness versus, you know. Mm. Uh, the record is actually 58. I, I had guessed the record to be 45, I believe. But the record is 58. So you can get basically one per second, all, just about, you know. If you can get up to 60, if you can actually do one per second, you can be a record holder yourself out there, ladies and gentlemen. So that should be a lot of fun. <laughs> Hey, man, I'm trying to get in the world record. I, I told you earlier, I'm an old man now, Henry, so I need to maybe, I need to start thinking like that dude in the show Soap. I need a legacy. I need something to, you know, nobody's going to remember me for this Metal Omania thing, so I need something. For the record, you sure this guy caught 120 quarters? It's what the book says. Stand back. You ready? Yeah. Hey! Go! Oh! <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get it. This guy caught 120. I caught one. I got 120 on the floor here. Uh, <laughs> all right, here's a, here's one more, and then we'll play a couple more songs, and we'll talk more about this shit later on the show. But all right, if you had two 12 packs of sodas, beers, whatever it may be, <laughs> how fast could you open said 12 packs and get two of them? So 24 total cans stacked in your refrigerator. You have to start from a closed refrigerator position. You have to end with a closed refrigerator position. No can may fall down. No can may be dented <laughs> is, is the stipulation. So you have to open and shove them in there. How fast do you think you can get all 24 cans stacked in the fridge, sir? Well, assuming that the refrigerator is empty and you can, like, stack them in a corner. Right. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. I, oh, man. 24 cans. Um, I would, I'd give it a minute. I'd say a minute's pretty realistic. Just fucking, just peel that cardboard back and just start Dude. throwing it in there. You're in my mind somewhat because I guessed 45 seconds for this one, man. I figured 45 seconds for it. Dude, the record, 9.76 seconds. Fuck that. Nine, under 10 seconds. There you go. Under 10 seconds. And under 10 seconds, this dude's got the record for popping the, you know, and the cans can't be opened, right? The cardboard cannot yet be opened. So that's pretty good. That's, that's pretty fast. Yeah. And I will tell you again, I keep saying this because I'm so very much encouraging our listeners out there to try, but most of the ones we wrote down in studio when we were brainstorming this list are ones we want to see people try on video. So, so give it a shot, Henry. I, I want to see you do it in 10 seconds, brother. There you go. You know, we joked in studio a few times about creating a sex book of world records, but then somebody told me it already exists. But like uh, when we were joking about it earlier, one of the people in the studio said they don't want to be known for the for the fastest fuck of all time. So there's that. <laughs> Maybe we should do a list in the future of records you don't want to own. You know what I mean? Records, the records. 
Do you know where I can pick that book up? I might want to fucking... You might need to catch up on my reading a little bit. Hey, man, challenge yourself, brother. The world, Life is not living until you're challenging yourself, you know? <laughs> ah, fuck. Hey, at one point, I was trying to break the record for fattest fuck. I wasn't going for fastest fuck, but I was going for fattest fuck. So I might have had it. I might have had it, brother. <laughs> ah, fuck. All right, well, I tell you what. Let's bring in our brother, Heavy Kevy from Insanity Alert. Me and Henry are going to be sitting here bullshitting about whatever we feel like bullshitting about tonight, ladies and gentlemen. We're having some fun. Henry had was so kind as to step in for our, our missing Scully tonight and help us get into the episode of the show. I appreciate it very much, sir. No problem. Now, now we're going to talk to my brother, Heavy Kevy, man. Now, we go back quite a bit with Insanity Alert here at, at Metalomania. We started our show in September of 2016, for many who do not realize, and... One of our very early interviews of bands that I was in love with was with Heavy Kevy, man. We talked to him that year. It was right after their Mossberger release had come out. Matter of fact, it was so long ago that it was audio only was our interview, and it was live. We did the whole thing live, man. Back then, we used to do live interviews. What a stupid thing that was, by the way. Live interviews are just a horrific idea. Edit them fuckers, man. You can cut out the crap, you know? So, But now we added them. We make them pretty. We, our buddy Dan out there, Metalomania Dan, does a lot a great job at making them look better so we're super excited to have heavy kevy come back and share the single shredditor with us and uh you know what well matter of fact let's bring in heavy kevy and then we'll play a couple more songs for everybody including a shout out a dedication for one of our listeners and then we'll come back and talk some more bullshit with my man henry what do you say Fuck yeah henry i love you sir man i appreciate this no problem dude Fuck yeah <laughs> metal on here's heavy kevy and now for something completely different all right, Metalomaniacs. Well, I, you may notice I'm smiling ear to ear now, and there's a big reason for that, and it's because the return of my brother, Kevin, man. My brother, Heavy Kevy, if you will. How are you, sir? I'm great. Thank you. I am so happy to catch up to you, man. You know, we go back a ways. I, I, we're going to get into that, but, you know, the first time we had you on the show, Mossberger had just come out. That's how far back... Mossberger was literally two weeks old when we had our third episode ever of Metalomania. Wow. So, you know, I go back with you, man. That was one of the first albums we really played the fuck out of when it first came out. So great, great to hear. Yeah, super honored, man. What can I say? Fuck yeah. Big, big fan. So all that to say, I appreciate your time, man. Thanks for hanging out. How you been? Yeah, I'm yeah, I'm good, you know, like not as good as you apparently, because you look fantastic. It's incredible. I fucking love you. For those who are new to the show, uh, the first time we talked, I weighed well over 400 pounds, and that's no longer the case, thankfully. But, you know. And well, I, I had know. to get into fighting form so I can listen to your music and get into mosh pits and shit, brother. I was in no shape. I had to do something about that. When it's bit fucking up. It has to be opened. It has to be opened. We need it, man. I need it. It's like a drug that I've I've been, you know, detoxing without, brother, you know. Yeah, I can, I can understand. Well, yeah, congratulations, man. I, I'm guessing you also feel a lot better. And oh. so it's, uh, yeah, amazing. Uh, it's pretty crazy, man. Pretty crazy. Well, now I need shows back, though, man. Well, and the first question on my lips, how did you survive the pandemic, sir? What did you do? What did you to get, do to get through this crazy-ass time? Hey, uh, it's uh, Well, it's still going on here in, in mo big parts of Europe. It's still, um, yeah, every, there's, no, there's almost no live music. Um, in France, they're opening up um, on the 16th of February again. But here in Austria, it's, uh, yeah, there's no shows. Everything closes at 10. In the Netherlands, it's the same in Germany. And, yeah, what did I do? Um, basically, what I always do when I have uh, nothing to do, I play a lot of Nintendo. I smoke weed. I drink beer. I go skating. I watch basically everything on, the, on Netflix, uh, Prime. YouTube, I mean, in all honesty, the first lockdowns here, they were kind of relaxing, you know, it was a bit of a break from the whole going out on the road, and not that I don't like that, but it was a bit unique for me to have so many days off, and, but yeah, after, after a year, of course, after half a year, it already started itching, yeah. we had a few tastes, we went out there a, a couple of times, one time with Cry6 and a few uh, random shows on our own. But yeah, it's, it's, it's not what we do, you know, 2019 was a big booming year for us. And then yeah, everything basically came to a screeching halt. And yeah, just like everybody on this planet, we just 
sat and watched. Fucking crazy. Yeah. You know, I was following that you guys got on the road with Crisis. We're a big fan of those guys. They've come on the show a couple of times as well. Oh, good. Yeah. <clears throat> Love yeah, those guys, man. Yeah, regulars. Yeah. They're regulars. And uh, big fan of that pizza e EP, in fact. Uh, good stuff, man. Yeah. Uh, what can I say? It's um, We got in touch with them. I, I think the first time we... Uh, one of the first times we met was in Japan and we were there and they were there and it was just like, what? And they were from Spain, you know, like most of the bands we meet are from the US or from England and then they're from Spain and they're, they're giving it all. We were so blown away. Yeah, they kick we ass. Had, yeah, it's, it's incredible. How killer musicians and besides that unbelievably friendly guys, absolutely no, no weird attitudes, no, like really like you could almost call them a punk band, how nice they are and how willing to help and participate and think along. And for me, that is uh, something, unfortunately, rare, not too common in the, in, yeah. in, in, in the metal scene. And that's, I don't know how that was 20 or 30 years ago, but um, okay, 20 years, I know a little bit. <laughs> it used to be more inclusive. It really did, man. It used to be less elitism. It used to be less exclusion. You know, our thing used to be, in my opinion anyway, now I'm old as fuck. I'm, I'm way older than you, I believe. But, you know, I remember when it was, you know, we were the, you know, I used to call the metal thing the Island of Misfit Toys. Do you remember that old fucking Christmas, uh, you know, the, and, but that was our thing. You know, we were all the broken, fucked up kids. We ended up on the island together and we were, were very welcoming of the other broken, fucked up kids. And I don't know when that changed, but it did change at some point where we, you know, this elitism attitude has kind of crept in and I, I don't really yeah, get that, but. It's also a lot of like, like ego, egocentrism. It's like everyone's just looking out for their own and they all want to get on top and they want to get the best slots and have the longest sound check and the best plays at the merch. And it's, yeah, for me, that's not how it works. You know, you, you get that together, you try to get it as, as, as comfortable and as, as, as good for everyone. Fuck yeah. yeah. And that's, what I, that's what I always tell the guys also in the band. And we, have, and we, 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 we went through a few lineup changes. And for me, because I'm, I'm with a long shot, the oldest in the band. And I always tell them, like, I don't want anything to do with like some rock star attitude or... Like you help other guys if you if the band if the other band that's supposed to play before you is too late you open up this party and that's how you do it if a string breaks if a guitar like if the band got their stuff stolen you lend everything including snare breakables everything and I think that's how you do it and that, you could, man a rising tide raises all ships man I mean it's so true anything healthy for the metal scene is healthy for the metal scene and in, in its entirety is definitely my uh been on my approach all my life yeah that's but what i always thought it was i truly believe that too so yeah what can you do you can only when you can you have to practice what you preach so the, the, i always and, and and i know i know that all the other guys in the band do agree and we like most of the yeah, we don't end up with guys in the band sit spending hours in the van in the rehearsal room if if, if they don't share that attitude you know that that that, that, that you spot that really early on so Right. It's more than the creation of music with these people. It's a sharing of your life, man. It's a sharing of your, your art. Your, and that, let's, let's be honest, that's a part of your soul. You're sharing your soul with yeah. these motherfuckers, man. That's a, that's a huge thing, you know? That's how we do. And if okay. you don't like that, yeah, if you want to do something else, you should, there's like enough different styles and genres where you can totally be the asshole, but. Right. Yeah. Go do what David Guetta's doing, you know, who, and he's still somehow still alive. I don't know how the fuck yeah. that is, but. Everything dies on this planet except for him, man. Except for that fucking guy, man. What the fuck? You should look at his place for the cure for COVID as well. <laughs> totally sitting on it. Right. You're probably, unfortunately, the case. When the world burns down, there will just be a bunch of David Guetta's left behind and shit on somehow. But... <laughs> yeah. Then I hope I burn down too because it's not a world I want to live in. Yeah. No, you and me both, brother. Hey, I'll take the <laughs> flames down with us, man. As uh, long as we don't have to listen to his fucking music. Hey, as long as I can listen to your music. And I'll tell you. Uh, you guys have a distinct – recently on the show, we asked Scully at Point Blank. We were kind of doing Point Blank, you know, on-the-spot questions of people. And, you know, we asked Scully what her very, very favorite song uh, of all time is. Her yeah. answer, my friend, was no mosh, no brain, sir. What do you think of that? <laughs> it's, I can't, it's hard to – I'm very honored, but it's hard to believe it. But 
It's <laughs> yeah. Hey, and we put her on the spot with that one, man. So it and it came right out. She was like, no. <laughs> She says that that when she's at work, even and I I totally understand it. But when she's at work and needs that pickup and needs that go, she'll put that song on and she's ready to rock. You know, ready to get it going. So that well, so well, tell me a little bit about what's going on with you guys, man. I know you did undergo a few changes and that sort of thing, and I, the world being kind of on pause very much is a monkey wrench in plans, and I I certainly do get that, but. I, a lot of people seem to be targeting spring as a return. Are you hoping that that will be the return for you as well to kind of things? Or Yes. Well, I, I hope it, of course, sincerely. Um, after these two years, I don't, know, I don't really know what to believe anymore. Um, everyone okay. was – like we, we, put, we postponed uh, a few tours and shows. Like some of them were like postponed three, four times. And yeah, I think expect the unexpected, but I, I really hope so. And last, uh, last, the last summers already showed that here, uh, that it was possible. That we, there were festivals and it's all, but yeah, you have to be careful in what way is it coming back? Because uh, in Holland now, you're allowed to do uh, events and concerts, for example, but uh, people have to sit down and there has to be one and a half meters. So that's well, like, five feet apart and there's only you can only uh, let in a third of your capacity so yeah these are things that it's not possible to organize a live show right and, how do you fucking get a mosh for that god damn it well yeah, it escalated a few times on the crisis tour and we because the promoters would come to me because we were the opening band for christ and they would already tell me I was already like on a lot of substances and and then and they, they they would tell explain to me like yeah you, you cannot motivate the crowd to do shit so and I was like what but that's basically what I do you know? right I stage and I try to get everyone as crazy as possible so there was yeah it was like a challenge and sometimes it was funny I I, I sometimes I used a mic stand which I'd never done before and but to come back to your question I. Yeah, I, I really hope so. And we are planning. Um, we are working with the same agent as Kryzik. So she's booking us together. Anna from Master of Metal. Oh, Anna, right. Yeah, she's amazing. She's actually been really great to our show as well. So Okay, yeah, yeah she's super cool. And uh, yeah, one thing that she is more than cool is positive. She's an unbelievably pos positive person. And yeah, it's tricky. It's good. It's motivating. But sometimes, you know, like... It's, it's it's sad that she's she's that she's so into it and yeah this whole world is basically letting us down right working it's, against her yeah yeah but yeah she's really positive and I I work a lot with her on different dates because I've been yeah I've been a bit, I'm a bit older than the other guys from the boat bands and I've been around a little so I I know people from drinking everywhere fuck yeah so <laughs> that's how I do it and yeah we we we're, we're, bo we're booking the shows and I really hope that it's gonna start because I missed it and I've yeah. I've uh, yeah I have two new guys in the band that uh, are really ready to go and i thought yeah, like you said i cannot promise them anything you know i cannot say yeah these, these, two, these shows are going to happen so just to, to, to take off from work and it makes it a bit sad and also to get this thing on the road again you know i want to see i, I want to have them write songs i want to see i want to see them on big stages like hellfest and stuff yeah at this fuck, point yeah right tricky fuck well, you know, on that topic, give give a shout out to those guys. Who are the rest of the gentlemen that currently make up Insanity Alert with you? Uh, well, we still got the two legends, uh, Don Melanzani on the drums. He's like, uh, el, el, how do you say that? Like a machine. A yeah. Like a machine and a cockroach. He just won't, he just won't leave. Yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> and then we have still in the band, but a little bit less than before, uh, the Dave of Death. Two years ago, just right in February 2020, he had a, a, a daughter, Matilda. And yeah, that, uh, that also takes up a lot of his time. And he's, uh, this, is not, yeah, this is not debatable. And it's, of course, very logical. Right, so I get he, it. Yeah, I get it. He skipped a few shows. And he also became a professor at the university. So <laughs> Whoa. Wow. that's where the other hours go. Wow, yeah. But he sometimes drinks with us still. So if he, he's not... He's not He's not looking down on us yet. Oh, so. yeah. <laughs> and, and then we have two new guys. They're both called Phil, Philip. And uh, one is a guitar player also from the band um, Into the Tempest. That's his own band. 
Oh, Very killer. Cool. Yeah, hard metal, classic metal. And he also plays in the, yeah, the Liquid Steel, a very Iron Maiden influenced band from Innsbruck. And then we have uh, the other Phil. He plays in a killer band called Virio. They are from this region too, and they play, yeah, very intense tech death. Tech so, death, yeah. yeah. We've played some of them on the show, I do believe, actually, yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah, yeah. He's a, and they're both really amazing musicians uh, and super funny guys. Uh, it's a, they, they fit right in. They have the same kind of weird, sketchy humor that, that we have been spreading out on our records the last uh, 10, 11 years. Forever, yeah. Well, let me ask you that. I, I, it's been said that a sense of humor is as mandatory as an instrument when making crossover music. Do you agree with that statement? Absolutely. I totally will. <laughs> I cannot play an instrument, and I still play in a crossover band. So, <laughs> <laughs> fuck yeah, brother! Well, and has the where are you in the development stage? I know that you've kind of been forced into. We've all been forced into our little shells here over the last couple of years. Uh, you know, the I, there was the single that came out not too long ago, the the shredded or single, which is pretty badass in and of itself. Thank you. Where are you in the stage? Are, you know, are, are you putting together new shit? Where, where, yeah, yeah. We, we, we were not that active as some bands with like the live shows on on Facebook, and I, that that became clear to me really really early on in the pandemic that I was thinking, okay, I'm not gonna. This is not what we do. This is not insanity. Like we we either make a video where we can really take our time, or it has to be with with the interaction of people. So yeah, we did the shredder. We did a video for that. That came out uh, when we put that out, December, I think. Yeah. So it was almost a year between the song and the video. Fuck yeah! <laughs> we were waiting for the skateboards, but they are. That's a, a skateboard brand from from Germany, Colo Skates, and they have the same attitude as us a little bit. So sometimes it just doesn't happen, and sometimes it goes super fast. But yeah, we did that, and now we're working on uh, some sort of EP. It's a bit in the, the line of our uh, run to the pit, uh, basically the song that started the band, where we do where we do our versions of, yeah, not really our versions, but uh, four songs similar known as uh, as run to the pit. And yeah, it, it, it's absolutely amazing. It's one of the funniest, funniest <laughs> things that I've ever done. Fuck yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I... The, the, the title of the EP will be Moshimian Tragedy, so you sort of know where it's going. <laughs> and it's, yeah, it's, 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 for me, it's like mind blowing funny. And that also <laughs> gives the guys a great opportunity to, to, to show the world that, that they're really good musicians. You know, people always do a bit of jokingly about crossover bands, but it's like, it's so tight and they could totally keep up with any genre of metal and punk and hardcore, no doubt. Well, and, I fucking love the musicianship of crossover music, man. You know, you blend me some punky fucking metal together, and I, you know, that shit's that shit works like Viagra on me. So what the fuck, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's great. As soon as the world opens up again, come back and talk to me about it. We'll 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 celebrate it together a little bit. For sure, yeah. I will definitely get in touch. <laughs> Thank you, my friend, very much. Ciao. Yo, this is Heavy Kevy from Insanity Alert, and you're listening to Metalomania.
I was born of the sea. I eat fire coral and I piss salt water. I scratch my back with a whale's dick. And I loop on my chest with his ball sack. What the fuck? <laughs> That's right, get landloppers. It's piece of shit Petey, the parrot that talks rock. Sure, toss me a couple bucks. I'll talk. He's been equipped with sound sensing voodoo. <sighs> Can you believe this bullshit? <laughs> Looks like you've raised a self-entitled prick. I'd shove the broccoli down his throat myself if I wasn't attached to this perch. So, Petey, do you think I'm pretty? Yeah, you're all right. Just all right? I never got a good look at your ass. It's big. Motherfucker, say what? By the show of hands, who here has pleasured themselves to Lady the Tramp? Liars. All liars.
White wakes me up. Blue calms me down. Orange keeps the demons from dancing all around. Hit him with the hyena! Get him off me! <laughs> <laughs> this is even better than killing hookers! Now I want each of you to put your hand on the television set. Great, who are we killing? I won't do kids, that's a rule. But that rule is negotiable if the kid's a dick. How awesome is Heavy Kevy for returning to the show, man? I'm such a big fan of Insanity Alert, those dudes rock. Awesome dude, am I right? Fuck yeah, dude. Fuck yeah, man, those cats rock. Thank you to Heavy Kevy for coming on, and we will talk to him again in the future, I promise you. And I look forward to cracking a beer with that dude at some point. But uh, And for those of you paying attention, we followed that up with a couple of quick jams for you as well, man. We played some Acracia. Acracia, this band is out of Budapest, Hungary, and has just stolen my soul, man. This is a debut from them. It smokes so much fucking ass. Uh, we played Sterile Gods from Act of Will, their debut full-length release. And then behind that was a shout-out to our brother, Kendo out there, Kendall Hansen, who is a big Inhuman Condition fan, just like I am. Me and him have talked about it a little bit on some social media stuff. So we played Killing Pace. Killing Play Pace from Rat God. A uh, debut release from them. That's a Florida badass band. That's a debut release from them and it's fucking such a great release, man. And for those of you who do not have it, fix that in your lives immediately. So we're hanging out with my brother, motherfucking Henry, talking records, talking, you know, crazy shit. We're, we're deciding whether we're going to get into the Guinness Book of World Records or we're going to create our own sex Guinness Book of World Records you know whatever everything's on the table we don't we don't pre-decide and pre-judge so keep hanging out though we do have pizza death coming to hang out with us in a little bit too by the way but but we were talking records and shit and as a matter of fact while those songs were playing you just saw a crazy record that, that, on your thing didn't you 
Yeah, fucking <clears throat> just came across an article that said the longest lightning bolt in the world was 477 miles over three states. Over three states. That is bananas, brother. That's crazy. Yeah. You don't want that landing. And, and, you know, well, that's the kind of shit, if it hits you, it gives you superpowers, right? You'll be one of the Fantastic Four if you... If... <laughs> Imagine that, like, if there's a shitload of people golfing, just somebody just right about to drive and just wham. Char charcoal briquette. Red <laughs> that's fucked up man that's fucked up well we are talking bullshit crazy records and shit and kind of covering some goofy <laughs> ground i dragged in henry last second as a matter of fact so some of the notes that our, our viewers have been telling us to cover I'm, I'm i'm forcing henry to cover with me a little bit tonight man i, I got another record i want to bring up man and this one struck me as hilarious and again i want footage of all these i want our listeners out there filming themselves trying to break these records but so here, here's a good one man what how many tennis balls can you hold in one hand now first of all if the record's held by a woman, I want to date her. But, uh, no. <laughs> and and if you change hand to mouth, I believe one of our interns holds that record. But that's a different conversation. So, um, but how many tennis balls? If you could, st you can stack them in a pyramid, I believe. So how many tennis balls can you hold in one hand? Now, the rule on this, just to give a little background, is you must do it alone. And you must hold one hand out while stacking with the other. Mm. And they must all hold in place after the minute is up. They must all hold in place for five full seconds before tumbling to count. So how many how many tennis balls can you know? I've been asking people around here how many balls can they put in their mouth all week. But the, you know, again, we'll talk about that later. But how how many tennis balls can you hold in your hand, Henry? Well, if you're if you're allowed to stack them like a pyramid, I would say maybe get four or five for the base another four on top. So I'd say in the realm of maybe 20-ish if you're properly stacking them. I love, well, first, I, my guess was 20. I had guessed 20, so we're right on similar mentalities. The record is 26. The record is nice. 26. 26 tennis balls. I feel like there's somebody out there with some big fucking meat grippers, you know? <laughs> you know, that can... <laughs> <laughs> There's somebody out there that fucking, you know, has a big fucking monster hand that can break this record, man. So let's go. Let's go. They look like big, good, strong hands. Well, I, I, we need a metalomaniac. The conquest here, the ultimate goal here is that we have a bunch of metalomaniacs and just fucking invading the Guinness Book of World Records. For, <laughs> you know, so that would be amazing. <laughs> On an iPad, how fast can you type the alphabet backwards, sir? What? Yeah. I can't, I can't even state the alphabet backwards. Dude. Yeah, there's no way I'm ever breaking this one. It has to be an unmodified iPad. It doesn't matter if it's upper or lower case, and it must be done with zero errors. Dude, two seconds, brother. I guess like fucking, yeah, I guess like 20 some odd seconds. Dude, two seconds. Somebody can do the ba alphabet backwards in two goddamn seconds on an iPad. Fuck that. Error free. <laughs> Dude, so many of these people are like quick thinkers with a lot of this shit and like well, dude, as a guy, I would like to date the girl that holds the ball record. As a woman, she probably wants to date this guy. You know. Well, and you only you only got a couple of them though, so you don't really need somebody to hold 20. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> hey man, I'm a lot older than you, man. I'm just saying, as they grow and hang and anyway, it's a long, ugly story for a different show. <laughs> what about Leapfrog? Do you remember the game Leapfrog? Yep. Did you play Leapfrog when you was a young and coming up? I did. How many well let me how many leaps could you and a friend do in 30 seconds? Now the rules on this are you must take turns. Yeah, obviously, one after the other. The person being leapt must have their hand on the ground, and the person leaping must have their hand on the person, their leaping's back, is the way it works, rule-wise. So in 30 seconds, how many times could you leapfrog? Uh, I'd give it about 15 or 20 times. I guessed 30, and the, the record is 32. 32. Damn. Somebody's got better than, a, better than a leap per second, which is pretty impressive, honestly. Yeah. You know? 
That You're a leaping motherfucker. You're a leaping bastard. And the winner of the frog leaping contest was Hoppy, with a jump of seven feet, ten inches. Hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. I got some more here. Most saltines eaten in a minute. This one surprised me. I bring this up because this one surprised me. I was way off on my guess. Now, the rule on this, you must eat one saltine at a time. Swallow it and show an empty mouth in between each saltine. I'll tell you right now, I guessed 40 saltines in a minute. And, and I, I was wildly over guessing. Okay. Um, you can't drink or any of that shit in between or none of that either, so. Yeah, that makes it, especially if you have to, like, show your mouth, too, that takes a few seconds at a time. Right. Oh, man, I would say, like, 10, maybe. Boom, that is the record. Damn. Yep, okay. 10 is the record, yes, sir. So, averaging six seconds per cracker, it sounds like, so. <laughs> there you go. It could be another record for how many people actually enjoyed eating saltines. Yeah, right? Well, I'm going to predict something right now. If a bunch of our crazy listeners out there try to break this record, we might break this record and we'll definitely break the record for cracker jokes. So, can you believe this cracker? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, cracker, eat that cracker. I'll bet there's a thousand of that. But, uh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck that's funny shit all right so how about this one this one i definitely want footage of especially from our female listeners out there hey we don't want to exclude anybody right how many times can you jump into a pair of underwear now you must leap with both feet at the same time and land through the holes and then take them off and then leap into another pair and then take them off and then leap into another pair oh they have to be a separate pair no no excuse me that is incorrect oh. it can be the same pair hmm. So in 30 seconds, how many times can you jump in and out of your drawers? <laughs> Dude, I swear to God, I'll do an entire episode of showing nothing but footage of you folks out there trying this if y'all send us your footage of trying this. I, I promise you. We'll have a YouTube fucking show special to it. <laughs> Some of these records almost throw me into an existential crisis, dude. Yeah, dude, I tell you right now. Well, who thinks of these? You know, this is what Scully was saying earlier when we were talking about it. I want to know who thinks of these fucking records, who fucking establishes them, to, you know what I mean? Like, what? who are the brains behind this craziness, you know? <laughs> I think we both know who the real brains is behind this operation, eh? Holy shit, dude. And it's in, was it 30 seconds or a minute? 30 seconds. Oh, man. Yeah. I would say probably close to 30. I think if you got some pretty good jumpers, it's pretty, you probably close to 30. I guess 25, dude. The record is only nine. Nine yeah. times. Yeah, dude. That's a beatable record, I feel like. Yeah. Right? I mean. Any restrictions on size? You let's see. Fun. Well, yes, there is. There, You cannot, they have to be a commiserate to your size. You can't oversize it. That is right and right into the rule, actually. Must be the size you wear, not oversized each. Oh, and it must be a different pair. Excuse me. Yep. There you go. There's the ah, crux. Okay. I did you dirty on the information. Each pair must be completely removed between, and you must leap with both feet in between for each to count. I feel like that's beatable. And even if we don't beat it, it'll be fun to try, you know? Yeah. <laughs> All right, I got a fucking, I can't believe how many there are of these. So let's go over a couple more real quick and then we'll play some music. Matter of fact, then we'll bring in the guys from Pizza Death and talk to them a little bit about metal. So um, I appreciate all you metalheads out there that love our goofy shit that goes along with our metal here at Metalomania, man. You got, you catch the reason we do what we do. All right, how about this? Most push ups with claps in between. So push up, leave the ground, clap your hands, land again, push up. How many can you do in one minute? What's a cock push up? What's a cock push up? Well, me personally, probably one. Yeah, four. Um, I'm going to go four. So, <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, I'm going to clap once and land on my face, actually. Fuck. Dude, I'll bet you $10 that the person that set this record is probably in the military. Because I feel like people, I feel, if you're in the military, you just have to fucking, you're good at push-ups. Yeah, and, yeah. And you and nailed that shit. So they're doing them all the time. Yeah, you're probably right. I don't know, man. Probably 40, maybe. No bending of the knees. You must achieve a 90-degree angle each push-up. The record is 77. I guessed uh, 45. I guessed 45. But in a minute, it is 77 of them. Fuck that's that. that's pure badassery right there, man. 
You know, <laughs> I got nothing for you. All right. Well, I got some more of these to cover, man. Uh, yeah, well, let's do one more and then we'll play some music. I'm going to bring in Pizza Death. Fuck yeah. How can you, you're familiar with Mr. Potato Head, who apparently, every, you know, it's a big news story since they've, you know, whatever. I don't even want to get into the political bullshit. But with Mr. Potato Head, how fast could you assemble the Mr. Potato Head from factory, you know, the way it's supposed to look with all the pieces going exactly where they go, but do it blindfolded? <laughs> What? See again, this is one if the record is held by a woman, I'd like to date her. <laughs> Fucking Oh man. I know. Did you well I gotta is this generational? This was a conversation we talked about in the studio earlier when we were talking about some of this. Yeah. Mr. Potato Head, they just someone tried to tell me it's generational. Like my generation knows Mr. Potato Head, but your generation doesn't. Is that true? No, nah, I, I disagree because even even besides the fact that there was, what, I think now two new Toy Story movies that came out, fucking, you know, when, when I was a kid, I remember when Toy Story 2 came out, and the first Toy Story was a 90s thing, wasn't it? Right, I believe so, yeah. yeah. So I think with that being said, I mean, I don't think it's a generational thing. Those toys have been, I feel like a lot more kids know about the toys than they do the movies even. Right. Right. And then once you do introduce the movies, then it's a whole new thing, you know? Yeah. Right. I I still see them in toy stores and shit like that on occasion. So I feel like it's still, you know, a relevant thing, but yeah. Well, for those wondering what the record is 16 seconds, if you can put one together blindfolded in 16 seconds, you can break the record. <laughs> I was yeah. going to guess like five minutes. <laughs> Yeah, dude, I feel like it would take me that long, you know? <laughs> hey, and Skelly will back me up on this. I have pretty good hands. So anyway, uh, let's bring in Pizza Death and talk to them a little bit about some metal. And uh, I got some more songs. Matter of fact, these guys are going to open up our sandwich this week. So we're going to play Pizza Death. We're going to talk to Pizza Death. We're going to play the song Pizza Death off of the release Slice of Death. And then that will set up our old school jam and all that shit. But we'll talk about that on the back end here. So what do you say we bring in Pizza Death and we'll go from there? Let's fucking do it. Keep hanging out with us here at Metal Mania. I'm talking to my boy Henry, and we're getting goofy in the studio. Much love. <laughs> and now for something completely different. Well, hey there, Metal Maniacs. As you can see, the badassery continues around here as we're joined by my pals from all the way on the other side of the globe. Fucking from down under. What's up, gentlemen? Pizza Death joins me here tonight. What are you doing, guys, man? Thank hey, you for having out. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Very, very excited to talk to you guys, man. I'm going to tell you right off the get, I'm a big, big fan. I love what you do. I love the video we played for everybody. Matter of fact, we may play that song tonight. We'll talk about that a little bit. For starters, introduce yourself to the gang, if you don't mind, guys. Well, I'm Kane. I play bass, and I do backing vocals as well. And I'm Pat, and I do vocals. And who are the rest of the gentlemen that helped made this kill out, killer project that you guys have put together here? We had uh, Plonk on guitar, who couldn't make it, and also Tim on drums. Well, since they're not here, let's talk mad shit about them. So, uh, fucking bastards. No, no, I mean, no, I, I love you guys, <laughs> man. Again, I am a big, huge fan yeah, of this project, man. We just talk shit about them this whole 20 minutes. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah right. There you go. You know, we like to make life hell for the guys that don't make it to the interview, man. That's what we do, but... <laughs> well, I know that you guys all come from various backgrounds and various other bands from that scene. So, for starters, if you don't mind, give me a little bit of history of how this thing came together. Tell me how you guys came together to form what would become Pizza Death. We've known each other for years, just playing in various other bands. And uh, I think just the fact that, like, Melbourne had a pretty strict lockdown. And so, we didn't have a lot to do. We had to stay home a lot. And... I guess our imagination just went to weird places and we just thought, let's write four stupid songs about pizza. And then, yeah, we got the band together and next thing we know, we're launching an album and like, yeah. Yeah. It's the joke that won't die. It just keeps going. And yeah, we're more than happy to keep going with this ridiculous band. Yeah. And was it like 280 days we spent locked in the house? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. A, a roughly 280 days. And it was just, uh, you know, coming up with dumb pizza songs is just, kind of kept a smile on my face that <laughs> that's fucking that's a long time to be locked up in the house for us, so <laughs> that's fucking epic now, your, here we are. your your pizza tales became survival stories to make it through this crazy ass fucking time man 
Yeah, exactly. It was a big survival story for sure. Yeah. yeah. So we don't want to know what's happening outside. We just want to talk about pizza and yeah, play yeah. fast yeah. music. Yeah. Total escapism. Total escapism. 100%. Oh, well, if it makes you feel any better, it has also helped me survive too, man. So that's been the gift that keeps on giving there, brother. <laughs> Glad to hear it, man. A good idea has legs. You guys have literally created pizza with legs, man. I mean, that's you can't go wrong. <laughs> the ideas don't seem to be running short either, you know. No, we thought we would have been tapped out by now. Yeah. We've already finished the second album in writing stage pretty much. So yeah, hopefully we record yeah. that later this year. And oh, that's keep amazing. Going. People are into this ridiculous band, so are we. So yeah. we'll well, <laughs> dude, I'm a huge fan of crossover stuff. I'm a huge fan. If you blend any kind of punk influence and metal together, that shit gives me what, well, let's call it what it is, a pizza boner. And, uh, you know, yeah. a, a pepper bony. I'll tell you a story about that in a second, actually. That, that, oh that word, that word has history for me, man. That word has history for me. And I'm going to tell you my pizza story in a second. But, you know, this is my shit, man. If, I, if you were to put a gun to my head and say, what is the genre you most want to hear all the time? And it, it, for me, it's crossover. It's that, that thrashy blend of oh, yeah. punk right. influence stuff. So you guys are in my yeah, wheelhouse. Yeah. I've always thought my favorite styles of music were punk and metal. And it's even better when you do them both at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> it's like chocolate and peanut butter, man. That shit is like, ugh, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's it. We've oh, got well, a band like with the pizza theme. We can sort of just mash genres together. Like we wrote a song that had like black metal riffs in it, and then it goes to a thrash bit, and then it goes to a doom bit. It's just like we're going to be stupid and ridiculous. Let's go all out. Right. Let's have fun with this shit, man. Let's have. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. Why not? I when I was in middle school and high school, I used to draw a comic book character. I was addicted to drawing a comic book character. And it was a guy who was half man, half pizza. That was my whole. And, <laughs> and as the result, he was in a, he was a pizza delivery guy that was in a store that was, the, that had some kind of uh, radiation leak. And as the result of it, he ended up being half man, half pizza. And his dick was a stick of pepperoni and his name was pepperoni. That's you see any of these pictures going around? Yeah, I want to see this. I, dude, I <laughs> swear to God, I wish I – this is from so – I'm old. I shouldn't even tell you how old I am, but this, they're so old. I don't know if I could find them. But but please do run with that idea, man. Pizza Boney, take it and run with it. If you if you got something, All right, go. excellent. We'll collaborate on a shirt, I reckon, for sure. Fuck yeah. Half man, half pizza with a pepperoni dick, man. Pizza Boney. Yeah. Is he like a mermaid? Like oh, half dude. And half, or is it just it was worse. Well, he had a half a face, and then, like, one of his eyes was a piece of pepperoni, and his half of his face Fuck was yeah. melting off with cheese and shit, you know? He would solve he like crimes by tasting shit on – he would go around to uh, crime scenes and taste shit, and he would solve shit by tasting DNA. He would be, that was his whole thing is, let me taste your DNA. So we had, like, super, super tastes. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, excellent. All right, cool. <laughs> He'd pick up some semen and taste it on a fucking, you know, on a crime scene and be like, this hooker was killed by a 27-year-old white man, you know? Like, <laughs> I want to see this show. <laughs> right, it's going to be hey. a cartoon series, I think. <laughs> Adult Swim, hit me up, man. Adult Swim, if anybody from Adult Swim's out there watching, hit me up, man. I got ideas, so. Yeah. Hey, and these are... <laughs> yeah. Soundtrack covers. These guys got the fucking theme song already ready to go, so. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> right, that that'll get adults name over the edge if you just mention our name. <laughs> Fuck yeah! My apologies for I, I took you down a detour of pizza bo uh, pepper bony. My apologies, pepper bony. But <laughs> I'm right there. <laughs> Tell me what your approach was to what was going to be your first delivery into the world. I mean, it's officially the Pizza Death debut outing, if you will, man. What what was your approach to that? What did you want to make sure was the punch in the mouth effect? So it kind of took a little while to really know what it was, I guess, this whole thing. Like, we were just, we knew we wanted to play fast, heavy music with stupid lyrics. And, yeah, it kind of took a little while for us to kind of be like, all right, I get a feel for how this actually is. And sort of, I guess, the tone and the humor and everything. It took a little bit of figuring out. But I guess once we, we hit our stride, and yeah, it's just like, this joke just won't die. There's so many things. Like, we watch a lot of horror movies, so... What we usually do is grab a horror movie, slap pizza in there, and there you go, this is the song. <laughs> yeah. Some stupid pun and then write some fast riffs, and yeah. then I'm pretty happy with what came out. And, but we're yeah, alive, like man. Of time. 
around and like Pat would send us a message being like, hey, I just wrote like another bunch of songs. He sends like another five demos to you. And you're like, all oh, right, this isn't going anywhere. And just like a few days later, I wrote some more songs. And you're like, well, shit, all right. I haven't learned the last songs that you sent me yet. <laughs> it's surprisingly easy to write lyrics. Like uh, in previous bands, we're, we're very goofy, but we played in like serious political bands before. I don't know how to write about that shit. I know how to be dumb and try and make people laugh. But yeah, <laughs> so it's kind of, it's kind of nice because it's just like, yeah, you don't have to stop and be like, oh, how will people take this? Is it going to offend people? Just fucking put it out there and see what people think. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I love it. I love the approach. I love the tongue and cheek humor to it all. As a metalhead, and I'll be honest with you, I love many, many genres of metal. I, I, you know, I love my doom and my death and my black and everything else. I'm a thrash metal guy. But right we, we are sometimes accused, perhaps, and, and, and maybe rightly so, of taking ourselves a little bit too seriously on occasion. So that's why I feel like that, that crossover thing, man, it keeps us grounded in some way that I can't quite explain, but it's, yeah. it seems to be, the, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think that's probably why we didn't gravitate towards like black metal or something, because we just like to have a good time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have a running joke in the studio that if you really dive into a band's background and what their genre is, you can also predict what the substances are they like to get through the world with. You know what I mean? Like, you, you got your, <laughs> your, your, your party bong hit drinkers or crossover guys, man. Those guys like crossover. Those guys like thrash, you know. You know, if you're fucking yeah. into opiates and shit, you're probably into the doom stuff. You're probably, you know. <laughs> oh, grunge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. There you go. Grunge and shit, right. What kind of drugs are black metal bands doing? That, that's opiates in the forest, man. They're doing opiates and acid and fucking mixing it together in the forest. <laughs> you know you're doing good drugs to paint your face like that shit, but... <laughs> hey, although... Hey, you know what? I'm going to paint my face. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> although, I'll be honest with you, when Scully paints her face on and gives that black metal paint face paint on, I do like that shit. I ain't going to yeah. lie yeah, 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 it does look fucking cool. Yeah. I just don't think I can pull it off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I chase her around every time. But anyway, <laughs> on the approach to this album, you know, there's 20 songs. You guys, it's a very punch you in your face approach. It's a very crossover, if, you know, by the book, man. It's crossover by the book. And I love that about it, you know. Was that your uh, intent right from the get, man? We're going to do the fucking straight up crossover. We're going to mix that 80s blended style of kind of DRI meets SOD meets the fucking Pete, local pizza guy. Yeah, definitely. Um, like, so we're all from a bit of different backgrounds. Um, like, but, yeah, Kane and I play in a lot of punk hardcore bands, but our guitarist, Plonk, is just a fucking thrasher and death metal bands and thrash bands. And so it is a bit of a, a bit of a blend. Like, we, we knew we wanted to play short, sharp songs that don't wear out their welcome. And yeah, and then it's sort of just a bit of a mash of genres to kind of get a little bit different as well. So I, th I think. Turned out all right. Yeah, if you consider, just so, yeah. Oh, dude, I I'm a huge fan, man. Well, and on that note, are you able to get on stages, kind of yet? Where where are, what's going on with Australia as far as being locked in? Where are you guys as far as being able to get back uh, it's out? It's changing all the time. We were supposed to have a um a big uh like launch show for the album uh, just two weeks ago. Yeah. yeah, two weeks ago, and that unfortunately got cancelled due to like uh, cases just getting out of control. And like at the moment, we uh, there's no like there's not really any restrictions, but it seems that everyone's just getting sick, and there's venues closing down just because they don't have the staff to open up. And like you know, and, and shows are cancelling because all the bands have got COVID and, and can't go out. Or people aren't comfortable going to the shows because it's fucking everywhere. Yeah. So it's it's just a weird in between stage that I think we've just got to wait it out and. Hopefully, we've we re rescheduled the launch for April. Yeah, I feel like by then it should be pretty sort of stable, but uh, it's yeah constantly changing. And yeah, but we, yeah, we do have a show on February thirteenth at Frankie's Pizza in Sydney. So we're going to be like leaving Melbourne for the uh, this will be the first time we ever play outside of Melbourne. So at the, at this point in time, that show is going ahead, and then two weeks after that, we are at a whole lot of love. That's right, yeah. In Melbourne, locally. which is, yeah, uh, just down the road from Pat's house where we are right now. So, the gear there, it's great. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we can just walk over there. Yeah. Awesome. It's going to be excellent. So, you know, at the stage, you know, there, there's two shows going ahead, but, you know, we just 
the you know, sh shows are getting cancelled week for like a week or so before they happen, and we hope that th this doesn't happen for these ones. But going by ear, you know, doing what, what whatever we can. Yes, wait out the storm, pretty much. Yeah, because uh, yeah, you also want the, the show to be as good as possible. So it's sort of a bit a bit conflicting. Like you want to be able to play, but you want to be able to play to people and not get sick if you can help it. And, yeah. You said you do have a, a storage of songs that will be the next battery of Pizza Death. Tell me a little bit about that, man. How, are you making plans with that? Is that something you're getting into the studio with yet? or? Uh, at the moment, we're just still sort of writing. Um, there, there is sort of a bank of songs, but they're, they're very much the bare bones demos. Yeah, yeah. Get, get like a little split to go out to get the momentum still rolling. And then, you know, uh, hopefully we'll be in the studio before the year's over to get the uh, full-length album out. Yeah, yeah, fingers crossed. So yeah, there's definitely enough tunes in the bank at the moment. We're just going to kind of like work through the demos and start rehearsing them and yeah. Get in the same room. Remember in the same room. For it's months. July. July, yeah, our last show was July. Wow. <laughs> yeah, dude. What, yeah, weird times. What weird times. You nailed it, man. Those metalomaniacs out there, they're going to say, how the fuck do I get my hands on this record? And what's the best way for them to do that? Probably Bandcamp or Big Cartel. Yeah, that's where you can get, get both either from that and we've got a bunch of t-shirts and pizza cutters and look at this product <laughs> placement right here we make our own pizza, pizza, cutters. pizza cutters oh yeah. fuck <laughs> me i have to have what do i gotta do i i got i need t-shirts and shit i'll buy them dude i need that pizza cutter dude you have no idea i need that yeah yeah right, so like you know fuck <laughs> michael jordan man we got air duggies right here <laughs> yeah. Air Dougie, yeah by the way tell me about Dougie, man give me a little Dougie background if you don't mind Oh, so I mean, like, you know, you, you, are you familiar with Captain Planet and Voltron? Fuck yes. Stuff like that? <laughs> yeah, so, like, you know, it's like Dougie's like the superior being. So once, like, you know, all four members of Pizza Death are together, we summon Dougie. Uh, and, like, before Dougie set out to become, like, you know, on this ambitious quest to become a thrash god like, and create Pizza Death, he was actually, like, the, uh, the star of a uh, commercial series on, t on Australian TV throughout the 90s. So, you know, this commercial pizza restaurant, it, for legal reasons, we won't we'll mention who they are. You know, it's not great. It's, you know, we're, we're, it's, <laughs> Very popular for some We, we don't have the right to write this shit, so we're not bringing their, we're not bringing their name into it. Um, <laughs> Fuck them. So, yeah. he was like the star of this television series and like in, uh, in like commercial, this, yeah, commercial ads, series. Ads yeah. In so, this ads. And so, he was like the star of this and they were, they were really successful and his name was Dougie and he played a pizza delivery boy. And it got to the point where it was uh, throughout the 90s, you know, in Australia, we would just call the pizza delivery boy, Dougie. Dougie. There he is. That's him. <laughs> yeah, he made I the appearance. It. I don't I know how, he got how the other two men were him, but, you know. We talked to him. Well, I think I mentioned his name five times and he appeared. It's like Candyman, yeah. Yeah, Candyman as well. <laughs> yeah. D don't do that at loan that night. Right. We don't so, work yeah, everyone out. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, in a future song, Dougie's got to meet uh, meet up with Pepper Boney, man. I'm just saying, you know, I'm just saying. <laughs> so, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe the radioactive poison gets poured on Dougie, and he becomes Pepper Boney. Oh, oh, see, look, that that idea has legs, baby. I'm just saying, yeah. yeah. Right itself. Yeah, it does. <laughs> We, we can do this all day, man. <laughs> you know, you're talking with two professional shit talkers on pizza, so yeah. Yeah, how long you got? So amazing that someone on the other side of the world can find our ridiculous band and like it. And, yeah. yeah, it means so much to us. Yeah. Oh, like it is Just, a very yeah. big understatement, man. Like it is an understatement. I, I love it, for real. Nah. Yeah, we've been blown fun. away by the amount of support we've gotten from all around the world for a band that played five shows in our hometown, and we've been locked up in our house the entire time we created the band. <laughs> and people affirmed, we sold it, like, I couldn't get past this, we sold an album to Peru not long ago. It's just, it's going everywhere, it's nuts, man. Yeah, we've half sold out of the record, we haven't played a show since it's come out, so. Yeah. <laughs> well, dude, you found the winning, like you found the winning recipe. Ah, see what I did there? But, uh, you know, <laughs> but, you know, metal and pizza and fun, man, and tongue-in-cheek humor, there's always going to be a home for that, man. There's always going to be a thirst for that. In my opinion, there's not exactly. enough of it, even, you know. So, well, fuck yeah, man. Hope all of these metalomaniacs out there are following the band and go out there and support badassery out there, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you guys so much for your time, man. I really do appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks so much, Chris.
Stay cheesy. Stay cheesy, <laughs> man. Stay cheesy. <laughs> hey, this is Kane from Pizza Death, and you're watching Metalomania with the Crypt and Scully. Slice of God! favorite pizza place <laughs> but there's a new unwritten rule in america that whoever orders the pizza is now in charge of the entire pizza process <laughs> yeah beginning to end sauce quality crust size pepperoni distribution it's all on your shoulders you picked up the phone so now more and more times going by and i was paranoid at this point point. and guys i'll be honest with you i was like 90% sure that I ordered the pizza. <laughs> but there's still that 10% that floats around your brain. You're like, did I just call my dad and tell him I like pizza? Because I love pizza. He loves pizza too. We love pizza. You could put pepperonis on it or sausage, mushrooms, whatever you want. But I did. I ordered it. I did. Because 10 minutes later, there was a knock at the door. I open it up. The pizza delivery guy's standing there. I was like, oh, hey, man, how's it going? And he looks right at me and goes, well, not good because I forgot your fucking pizza. <laughs> Turns away, walks down the driveway, gets in his car, and drives away. And I just started laughing. I laughed so hard. I almost pissed my panties. I was laughing that hard. And my wife comes over, she's like, what is going on? I'm like, look, I'm high, but I have no idea what the fuck just happened here. This is not my fault. So I called the pizza place up, and I was like, I don't know what just occurred here, um, but your delivery gentleman came to the door, and then he didn't have the pizza, and then he yelled at me and left. And the guy on the phone was phenomenal. He's like, ah, oh, shit, 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 shit. Frank, this kid's retarded. Now there isn't a hungry soul in this town that doesn't know my slogan. Just direct to your pizza to Daddy Green's Pizza.
so man, he played nine. I was born with a fucked up spine. I just want to feed my family. <laughs> Gets back on the phone. He's like, I'm so sorry, man. I'm like, look, I just want a pizza. That's all I want. He's like, we are going to give you one for free. This one's on us. Please just give us 20 minutes. 20 minutes goes by. Knock at the door, open it up. Who is standing there? <laughs> but the same delivery guy. This time he has a pizza, no eye contact. He's just looking at the floor. And I didn't know what to say because in my mind, I'm like, he's here to murder me and my whole family. <laughs> he's been fired and now he's here to kill us. So I was just gonna be nice. I was like, oh, hey man. What? Look at you again. That's, that's good. You had a good dry run there, buddy. All right. It's good to practice things. That's a, that's a good strategy. You okay? You all right? What's going on with you? He's like, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. I, uh, I fucked up a bit. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, full disclosure, I'm super baked right now, man. I am really, really high. And I'm like, so am I, dude. That's why I ordered this pizza two and a half goddamn hours ago. <laughs> I was like, did you have a lot of deliveries? He's like, no, man, just yours. <laughs> I was like, wait, 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 hold on. You got in the car with no pizza. <laughs> Drove to my house, sans pizza, just back it ah. <laughs> and then I guess about what, obligated to come in and scream at me? I'm like, what kind of shit are you smoking? He goes, it's really good. I'm like, fine, you're my new drug dealer, okay? <laughs> Don't forget the weed. Pizza. Ah. Ninja pizza? Pizza that vanished quickly without trace. Ah. ah. Yo, Mikey, hmm? toss me a ninja slice. You cannot break all the news inside. Red on yielding, world of fire. We stretch our strength on a bow. Stood for my dead
fucking shit, lady. Do I sound like I'm ordering a pizza? And that's how you do Metal Sandwich here on episode 243 of Metal Mania with my brother Henry from Pursuit hanging out with us tonight. All the way from Fargo, hanging out with us over there where it's fucking freezing and fucking cold and shit. And I appreciate it, man. Thanks for rolling up our airwaves with us. And thanks to those guys in Pizza Death for hanging out with us, man. I'm such a big fan of that release. It's got that real 80s kind of hardcore meets punky meets crossover feel to it. Right in my wheelhouse. If you guys hang out with us and watch the show, you know I love that. And that did set up our sandwich. I don't want to overlook the fact that that led into our old school gym jam of the week and then speaking of 80s i went all the way back to the 80s for our old school jam of the week this week and i played you some sacred denial does anyone remember these cats man out of new jersey they another band with that crossover it's kind of crossover night tonight talking to two crossover bands so i wanted to play an old school crossover jam but uh sacred denial sifting through the remains with the song and the release that's a band that was started off very punk but by the end of their run they had gone real hardcore kind of crossover approach and man this was their last what would ultimately be their last release 1988 sifting through the remains and i love it it's metal gold jerry and then behind that we played for you some silosis i am a huge silosis fan i love it their fucking 2020 cycle of suffering i play it all the time still in particular the song i sever it's kind of an anthem for me whenever i'm pissed off i kind of go to that song and uh that was the we played for you the single immovable stone from those guys man we overlooked that when it came out and i wanted to catch up with it and get it played for you so there you go and that brings you all up to date we have two more songs before we get out of here tonight and we're gonna hang out with henry a little bit more as we talk records and guinness book of world records and basically the, the notes from our goofy session here to uh since Scully couldn't make it to the show i appreciate you coming to fill in with me henry very much brother appreciate you having me man how many of these records are we gonna break together man you know oh dude well if you and i are gonna i think you and i should shoot specifically for the sex records let's do it man let's go yeah. let's go we'll yeah. film it all and tug on. We'll film it all, man. Hey, I got good. I got good for ponytails that don't pull your hair out when you take them out later, man. I'm, I think ahead. So uh, get it, get it. I see what you did there. Good one. But anyway, um, <laughs> welcome back to the show, everybody. I appreciate it, and we're trying very strong tonight on the show to talk some of our listeners into videotaping and taking shots at Guinness Book of World Records and sending them up to us here at Metal Mania so we can all have fun playing it on the air and shit. And me and Henry, in fact, now that I've lost all this weight, me and Henry are going to try to break the leapfrog record next week. So stay tuned. And uh, but yeah, I, I, I got a couple more I want to throw at you before we get out of here tonight, sir. And I'd like to get you taking your guesses if I can. How about this? How many coins can you stack? into a tower in 30 seconds 30 seconds it must be done one-handed with your other hand behind your back it can be quarters it can be nickels it can be dimes which i think is very odd so it seems a bigger coin might work to your advantage there but in 30 seconds how many coins can you stack sir uh depends do you have to do it one by one or can you group one at a time one individual yes sir one at a time one on top of the other one at a time with one hand and one hand behind your back the entire time Mm, I yeah. would say he's at 30 seconds. I would say somebody could probably do about 50 or 60 sounds realistic. Boom. 51 is the record, sir. Nailed it. Nice. Yes, very nice. I guessed 40, so I undersold it. But uh, yeah, 51 is the record, man. Perfect. So, I, and again, this I feel like this one's beatable. I feel like this is one someone can beat it. I just... You know, we tried to, when we were looking through some of the records earlier, we were really trying to identify ones that we thought might be either, well, two, we had two categories in our search. Are they beatable? Can maybe we get some of our listeners out there to actually beat them? But two, would they be hilarious if people tried to film themselves doing it? So that was our criteria for our search for the record. If they need any motivation, maybe you could incentivize them uh, to get free merch if they break a record or something. Uh, Oh, that's done. Consider it done. I will send you the biggest, coolest swag bag from Metalomania you've ever seen if you break a record and include our name with you on that shit and do it and share the video with us. I promise you I'll do that. T-shirts and CDs and the whole thing, man. I, have, I, I will hook you up. I will hook you up for sure yeah for sure for sure we've been very lucky over the years to get a lot of really cool swag and at this point we have doubles of a zillion kick-ass things and i'll happily send out a bunch of it to somebody who goes into the guinness book of world records wearing their metalomania shirt even there you go we'll make sure that happens for the picture so oh, yeah, dude. that's good shit man that's good shit so uh 51 coins man i feel like somebody can beat that and the last one we wrote that we, you know, I wrote down a couple kind of in passing, but most marshmallows, man, full, regular size marshmallows. How many marshmallows can you eat in one minute? Ooh. One at a time. 
by the way, you can't just shovel 20 in your face. You have to eat them one at a time and swallow each one individually. Yes, I'm going to assume you're required to chew it or... I, it does not say that. And I, I looked. It does not say that. I wonder if you have a big enough throat that you can just shoot it down there. Although that sounds unsafe. I don't know that I would advocate that. Yeah. Don't stick don't stick on chewed marshmallows down your throat, ladies and gentlemen, please. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. You know, chew that fucker up, man. <laughs> or at least make sure somebody is really, really good at the Heimlich near you. If you, you know, like, or hey, some of these ladies out here that you see in some of the porn. Anyway, that's again, again, I'm getting off topic, but, but, <laughs> but, uh, what do you think, man? How many, how many regular sized marshmallows can you slam down your gullet in a minute? <laughs> oh man, I'm gonna say like maybe twenty or thirty. But you're right in there, man. I guess thirty. It's the twenty-five is the record. Nice. 25 is the record. So if you can get 26 in, you can be a record holder, ladies and gentlemen. You can have your name in print in the Guinness Book of World Records. Again, the most stolen book in the Guinness Book of World Records is the Guinness Book of World Records. So there you go. That's a Your legacy lives on. Uh, some of the ones our staffies were throwing at us while you and me have been talking. Let's see. Most socks on one foot in 30 seconds. I'll just go through some of these. I won't make you guess all these. But most socks on one foot in 30 seconds apparently is 28. They have to be on and off completely in between. Let me run through a couple of these for you. Stack toilet papers. Now, this one I thought was funny because timely, man. And toilet paper has been quite a news story here the last couple of years, right? <laughs> so I think if you did a video where you're stacking toilet paper right now, somebody might break in and try to steal it all from you. But in 30 seconds, someone can, the record is 28 rolls. I feel like that's very beatable. Only touch one roll at a time is that rule on that. You can only touch one. You must place one and then touch one and place one and touch one and place one. But 28 and 30 seconds, excuse me, in 30 seconds, stack 28. Could you hold a box of them in your arm and just like... Oh, I guess you could. Yeah. Well, it says one-handed, so I wonder if the, holding the box in the other arm constitutes using another hand, I guess. Mm hmm you know, it definitely says one hand, one handed and one at a time. So, and you can only touch one at a time. So maybe holding the box is also breaking that rule. Yeah. Hmm. Make a big pile of them and bang, bang, bang. What about Smarties candies, man? How many Smarties candies blindfolded? Well, I just, I won't make you guess all these. It could be Smarties candies or it could be M&Ms. Blindfolded with chopsticks. What? Yeah. In a minute, a full minute. The record is only 20. I thought that'd be higher. I guess 30, but... That's actually... 20 is even impressive, dude. I feel like M&M's would be nearly impossible. Yeah, they're rounded, man. I would go for the Smarties if you're going to try to break that record. Yeah. Uh, dump out a can of alphabet spaghetti and create the alphabet using the pasta. <laughs> this one, the record for this is 3 minutes and 21 seconds. Weird. I feel that, like that's breakable. And me too, man. I, I feel like that's right. The, the note in this, where I was doing my research on this, the note is that finding the V in, in every attempt so far that's been recorded, people have the finding the letter V is the key. So if you find that fucker early, if you try to break this record and you see a V early, set that fucker aside because you're going to need it. <laughs> the word to the wise, find the V. I feel like that's good advice in life. For, for those of you paying attention, finding the V is kind of the pursuit of it all at the end of the day, isn't it? <laughs> it stands for vaginas or women's restrooms or something like that. <laughs> ah, fuck. I, I, they come for the metal, they stay for the dick jokes. Um, fastest time to eat a 12 inch pizza with a knife and a fork is just under 24 seconds. What? Yes. Must swallow every bit, show empty mouth for the for him to count, by the way. That is 100% a metalhead challenge if I've ever fucking heard one. The mo oh, dude, you just nailed We should make a metalhead challenge list. That's the way to go. I like it. Turns up, metalhead! Sticking clothespins to your face in 60 seconds. Apparently the record on that is 51 clothespins, and that record has stood for eight years and counting. Jeez. 51 clothespins stuck to your face. Hey, man, I used to be fat. I got a bunch of extra skin at this point. I feel like I could do this one. <laughs> I might be able to beat that. And I guess that's all the ones they wrote into us. But how many of these are you going to have your name, Henry Jordan, written into the Guinness Book of World Records next to you, sir? Yeah. Probably not. You and me both, brother. You and me both. I think I already have the record for long-winded fat jackasses who talk about metal on YouTube. So that's going to have to be, that's going to have to suffice. Sound about right? 
Yeah, it sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> that was fun, though. That was fun. Hey, I appreciate that. Some of these are no back notes and feedback on some of the shit that our our listeners have compiled over time for us. So I like to give back to have shows where we touch base on this shit every now and again. So there you go, man. There's some feedback on you cats. So so what's next for you guys, man? Are you going to be able to do any shows anytime soon? Or um, I know you're kind of buried in snow, but in spring, do you think that's going to be something you're going to be able to get back on stage and do all that? Yeah. Hundred percent. Um, so kind of what our plan is right now is we have um, we have one more show at the end of February. It's a local one in Fargo. We're headlining with Mall, who is currently out on tour, and we're also playing with Coffin Rights and Agony Reigns from Minneapolis. And then we've got a badass local opener who is like a noise project. Uh, dude's name is Jake. He plays in a black metal band called Thrall Frost. Fuck yeah. So that's pretty fucking cool. Um, and then after our show in February, we're taking a gigging break for a couple reasons. So the main one is that it's just, especially with vans, it's like traveling for gigs is just a safety concern with all this fucking snow and shit, especially with vans. For but sure. For sure. The reason is we're uh, recording our album in April. So after the show, we just want to put the rest of our time into rehearsing and getting these songs ready for the fucking studio so we can just get in there we knock can it out down and fucking do that but we are planning a tour uh with coffin rights for september so um yes if there's anybody out there that has connections in like chicago and cleveland and michigan hit up chris uh, send Chris my way with your information. We'd love to, we would absolutely love to play in Michigan and Cleveland and <laughs> Chicago and all this other stuff. So and long overdue, my friend, long overdue. Absolutely. And if you've got a band that would like to jump on this bill with pursuit and coffin rights for any of these locations, absolutely hit us up and you know we seriously would love to get out on the road and play some shows and meet some new people so that'd be super cool fuck yeah i gotta get you over to the east coast at some point man so hell yeah dude that'd be fuck sick yeah. we'll be in chicago in june i believe so we'll talk man we'll figure something out man but i look forward very much to drinking a beer with you in person my friend i don't even drink anymore but i'll break that rule just to hang out with you and have one and uh for real man <laughs> There's non-alcoholic options. So. Yeah, fuck yeah, you know, hey. It's not for any reason more than I've just been losing weight, really, you know, so alcohol's not your friend if you're trying to lose weight. But, hey, man, I'll, I'll have a dessert with you, and I'll call it a, a, a margarita or some shit. So. There's a uh, an old uh, old friend of mine who used to be one of my instructors in college and told me, one time when we were we were trying to meet up for a beer and it didn't quite work out so we ended up meeting up for coffee and he said the choice of beverage is not the purpose of the meeting so that's right brother that's right we're to live by that's right my friend yeah your, your company is where the wherever we end up my friend i look forward to that in person very much likewise buddy and i appreciate you doing this man for real dude i, I know it was kind of last second i sprung it on you man i hope i didn't make it too terrible for you and everybody out there tonight but i think for throwing together a last second fucking drag my main man henry in here we did pretty goddamn good and put together a pretty kick-ass metal program so there we go i think so it was a fun time fuck yeah man always is with you sir Fuck yeah, like so. Dude. And again, you know, we were talking all fair earlier about an idea where I'm going to drag you in. I got another panel idea. Well, you actually, it's your panel idea. So you have a good panel idea that I'd like to follow up on with you, my friend. So wow, yeah. Okay. Maybe we'll reach out to Brandon from Cruel Bomb and we'll get him to come do that with us, man. Because you know, we'll we'll reunite the old video game show and talk about uh, inspirational albums together. Fuck yeah, dude. Killer. Hell Killer, yeah. Man. Awesome. Well, Henry, thank you, brother. I appreciate it. And for those metalomaniacs out there who do not already follow Pursuit and my main man, Henry, correct that. Please, man. Badassery abounds. I love this dude. I love what they're doing, man. And that's why I dragged him in here to do the show with me. And I appreciate it, sir. Thank you very much for your undying support, man. You do so fucking much for metal and for scenes nation and worldwide, dude. Seriously, don't fucking stop. I will be sad as shit the day that I wake up and Metalomania is no more. Oh, man. I, You know, it's in my DNA. I, you know, we suck at it, but I got to do it till I die now. So there you go. <laughs> you don't suck at it, dude. But I love you, Henry, for real, man, very much. 
Love you, buddy. Awesome. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's get play two songs on the way out the door. But when we do play these two songs at the very, very end, wait till the very, very end because they're both killer songs. But lock the doors and shut out the lights, ladies and gentlemen, on episode 243 of Metalomania with my good friend Henry. And these two songs are going to be, well, let's see. We're going to open it up with some Hellbore. Hellbore, after a killer EP came out in 2019 called Holy Sadist. They have just released, well, actually, they have not yet released. On March 18th, they will release their debut full-length outing, which is called Panopticon, and we're going to play Necrocracy off of it right now, which is the song they've released, and I love it. So if it's a taste of what's to come, I'm very excited for the full length. And we're going to close the show tonight. We're going to go to Dallas, Texas for this three-piece and another debut for you drinkers out there. This is Gutricide. Gutricide has released their debut self-titled album. And uh, Gestate of Morbidity is the name of this song. And man, it's an EP, by the way. This is an EP. It is their debut EP. It's brutal. It's fantastic. It goes fa- just ridiculously great with bong hits and coffee. And let's be honest, you know, that's the criteria, right? I mean... <laughs> you things do not go well with that combination. You're wrong. You're not wrong. You're not wrong, sir. Now it's time to get super duper high. Bar mitzvah, hit it up, dude. Hey, you go great with ball hits and coffee, man. So let's get let's play these guys some metal songs, and you and me will go off and have some ball hits and coffee together. Let's do it. Thank you, Henry. I appreciate it, man, very much. Yeah, no problem, buddy. And thank you, Metal O Maniacs out there. Thanks for hanging out and putting up with us. We appreciate it beyond beyond belief. Keep hanging out and help us grow our YouTube channel if you don't mind. Sub and grab a friend. <laughs> oh, and you know what? We will see you next week where uh, we're going to have Lawnmower Death on the show and we're going to have Sarcasm on the show. So more killer interviews are coming. We got Great American Ghost coming in the next few weeks. We got Ingested coming on the show. So... Keep hanging, out. Keep hanging out. We got good, good guests. We give you good guests here, ladies and gentlemen, and we have the medals. See you next week. Thanks, Henry. Thank you. Look, let me be very clear. These hands are not touching anyone. I only use these hands to touch myself. Uh, let me rephrase that. Please stop speaking. And no more fist bumps for the rest of the day.
Not included. Barbie Burning Dream Church sold separately. Yeah, this right here, this right here, it's called tapping hours. This is the hours when people are tapping ass. I'm not tapping. I'm not I tapping. This just in, scientists have discovered that once you've been infected by metalomania, there is no cure. Contact Scully right away for more and more metal to feed the dragon. Hey, this is Eric from Play Gears, and you're listening to Metal Mania with the Crypt and Scully. What's up? This is Angelo from Raider, and you are listening to Metal Omania with the Crypt and Scully. Horns up. (laughs) 